Today we're going to draw the Dugite. Now the Dugite is this gorgeous, beautiful snake. It's sometimes called the spotted brown snake. It's got these little spots or I think they're more like speckles all through it. And that sort of just adds to the beauty of this gorgeous creature. So get out your pencil, get out your paper, whatever you're going to make a mark with and start drawing with me. I'm going to do a nice oval shape here. There's going to be a portrait of this snake. I don't know if you can see that because I'm doing it very, very lightly. Darken it up a bit so you can see it. And that's sort of the head shape. Bit of a neck here, bit of a lower jaw here. And neck there. See, so I'm just you know, using fairly free lines here. I'm going to put a line pretty much halfway in that oval and under that a circle. The Dugite has nice big bold eyes. Now down here I'm trying to get the shape of this snake. I'm just putting in a few lines. These aren't going to be actually scales. These are just sort of guidelines for me just working out the actual shape of this animal. So these are the construction lines, the guidelines. This is how I start a drawing. Drawings made up of three parts in my experience. There's the guidelines, there's the shading, and then there's what I call symbols. So some shading is going to go here. This is where I hold my pencil like this. Get more lead there. Contact in the paper and just very, very gently colour this bit in and here under that circle and a bit down here and have that coloured in also under the eye scale here another bit that's shaded in darkening around here I'll pop the eye in first I think now one of the features of this snake is that you just get like a little bit of a rim of colour. They do have very large eyes. But you get the colour of the eye just around the black pupil there. And it's going to be there. Okay, I'm just going to shade in a little bit here. So we go back over the shading and shade it in more. Oh, I'm going to put a weekly shape there. And colour that in. So that wiggly shape I put in there this is sort of like what I mean by symbols. An artist has so many symbols in his mind that he uses to describe things. And the more you draw, especially drawing from real life, the more symbols that you'll pick up. Which comes with experience. So it's good to start off with things like how to draw books. But then it's good to move on and draw from real life. Now it's going to darken here a bit. I'm going to make this light bit around the dark, very very narrow. Okay, it's just a feature of this animal. It's almost like a thin narrow ring of gold. Very deep orange gold. Okay, and now just a hard line above there like that. So I'll work around his eye. Bit of shade back here. These guys like to wear lots of mascara, especially the pretty Sheila snakes like this. Now there's a little bit of a dip in the scales there. I'm going to go across here. There's like a scale above the eye there, a scale above the eye there, and there's a scale between them. So I'm going to mark those in. So here's the first scale above the eye. And next we have a bit of a pattern here. And I notice this is very similar with a lot of snakes. Now this scale here, we want to make it curve a bit like this because the other scales either side are going to flatten down. So that makes it look raised up. So that's the eye on the other side of this animal. Next we have one, two, three, four scales here. Now again, common with lots of snakes, not just Aussie or leopards, but yeah, I've seen king snakes and snakes on the other side of the world also have 
these sort of, you know, one, two, three, four, they have like a scale above the eye, they have a scale between, sometimes this eye scale can be broken up. Here we go, that's got to go there like that, so it's going halfway between that and that. And that has to be bigger than that, it has to be wider, or it's not going to look right. Next we're going to have the next two, so it's almost like a cross there, and you have four scales. But in this case, these ones are a little bit smaller. Because this snake has a really big scale at the front here. A scale in here, which comes down to this point. And then another scale around here like this. Now I'm going to put it in a nostril. Okay, just like that. Now here we go. So just bear with me. A few more important scales to go. Starting to go to the upper lip one now. Right at the front here. They have a scale, the rostral scale, and on the dugite it's rather large. Now, there's a little dip there, and all snakes on their rostral scale have a little dip there for the tongue to come in and out of. I'm going to put the other nostril scale over here. A bit of shade there, but this here, from here to here, is wider on the dugite than most snakes. That's one of the features. When you're drawing a snake, you go look for the features that separates it from other snakes. If you want to do it species specific, you've got to make sure you get all those little tricky bits in that other snakes don't have. As I say, this is fairly common. You've got your eye scale, eye scale, I'll make that one in a bit. You've got one between, and then on a lot of snakes, usually back here, you've got divided two big like solar panels. I call them solar panels on the diurnal snakes, the snakes that come out during the day. Um, they pop their head out of their burrows or out from where they've been hiding at night. And they get a bit of sunlight on their head first and so having a nice big scales like this helps to warm up real quick but then again all these other ones work as well too. They're just broken up for movement. So under the eye we have just a line going down like that. Okay? This is going to be breaking up of the scales. I'm going to do a shape like this. I'm going to get this one here to here, another one, and here. Join that up there. So we have fairly large scales. This is a, a very large scaled snake. Go okay, here, going okay, from here to here. Of course, the larger the scales, I sometimes find that easier. But you can't just do a crisscross, crisscross, and think you're going to get away with it. You have to draw in every scale. So this scale here goes on like this, but it dips down there. And you probably shouldn't be too obsessed about getting things absolutely perfect, because there's not many people going to come along and count all the scales. I tend to like to get things as perfect as I possibly can because uh, every now and again you get somebody who will come along and count all your scales, especially some zoologists, especially some herpetologists, but still you've got to draw for fun as well. Bottom line, we're going to probably put a little bit of shade here like this. That come around here so it disappears under there a bit. Here break it up. It's really good to sort of see that these scales don't line up with the ones up there, otherwise it would look a bit wrong. Okay, good size scales. It's looking intense. Darken this up a bit. Well, hey, look at that. Now I'm going to go on to a, a, a usual trick that I use here. I'm going to do some scales there because they yeah, just look good. So, where I'm going to do the rows of scales, I've just got here some lines. I'm going to thin out a bit here. I'm going to make my old famous brick wall, which I discovered way back in the 90s. It's a really good way of drawing snakes. Scales around here are pretty short, so it's going to be like a short, fat brick wall. If you've got a little bit of drawing experience, you can see what I'm doing here. And I'm going to make the bricks go around here like this. Those bricks are going to come around here like this.
I need more lines here. Lovely brick wall. Now, replace each one of those bricks with a sort of, it's almost like a diamond shape, like this is a bare diamond shape. But we're going to make it rounded, a rounded diamond shape, and they all sort of tend to interlock together a little bit, which is nice. So this side of the bricks, they sort of swell out a bit. I don't want it to look too much like a diamond shape, so it'll look a bit more like a tiger snake. We don't want that, because this is our dew guide. The most feared snake in the Perth region of Western Australia. I want to get to these ones here, just so do what you can, make them a little bit more, just like little curves. It's like sneaking in little brackets there, really. Because they're all being squashed up because of the foreshortening of the scales. I make these look like they're disappearing here. Because I don't draw all the way to the edge, you usually leave a, a bit, so that means you've got to stop it somewhere and just sort of leave it a bit open like that. Things like this here are sort of getting a bit curvy too. We're getting close to the belly scales. I think I'll make those a bit more like belly scales here. A little bit sort of more squarish, just sort of going around like that. And you do both sides. And under here, under his chin, you have a few scales, but these are going to be mostly in shade. Now I'm going to shade in a few of the speckles. I'm excited about this because this gets to be more of a fun bit. Let's go. So I'm shading in complete scales here. Here's one scale here. It's just colouring in at the moment. I'm going to have to even put shade inside the colouring in a minute. And this scale here is like a teardrop. That's pretty makeup for a snake, I think. Now, a little speckle here on the bigger scales. I just have little bits of speckles here and there over this eye bit. I put a big blob and a speckle there. Where else? Got one there, a little bit there. Some of the speckles are very, very faint and some are quite spotty. So here's another one here, spot leading up to that bit there. Another spot, put a spot here. Spots everywhere, it's like a Dalmatian. And a few of these scales here. It's really cool how you get a couple of scales. No, I'm still in a row. I'm going that way, of course. And that looks pretty cool. Might even do one here. One over here. Don't want to do too much. That's looking pretty much dugite to me. Now, some more shade. I'm going to finish this sucker soon. I need to shade in. See, we started shading there, which was our almost like our guideline shading. Now I'm going to give it a bit more. Shade here. Shade here. And sometimes when you're shading, it's good to leave. Like, don't quite go up to that line. Go up to this line here, but not to there. And that gives it a bit more realism. And here. The dark bit has to be shaded. Go over it. Shade it again. Leave the top bit white. So the light hits this section here. So you go darken this bit here. I'll make it really dark on his spotches. And a little bit of shading there. Yeah, we've got another bit here. Because there's here keeps the grass out of his eye. Looks like he's angry, but he's not. A little bit here, we're going to leave the highlight there. So now we're leaving white bits for the highlights. Gives it a bit more shape. Bit of shape there. Now, shading under here. See how I put my pencil on the side like that? hold it like that, something like this, which is a bit hard, sometimes I just hold it like that, 
Now what happens is I almost point the sharp bit in where I want a bit more of a fine detail shape. But now I'm darkening in that mouth to make it really stand out. Now he's got a mouth under his chin next. So you can hold it like you're holding a pencil to write with. So if you can just get your hand on the side like this. Here I'm going to shade in these scales under here, just lightly, and between the cracks. What a nice looking snake this is, eh? Beautiful. Who could not like snakes, honestly? Okay, a little bit of shade here. Here. And up top here. Because the whole thing is a tanny colour, it's not white. But we're just leaving some little white highlights here and there. Like here on his eye. Do a bit of shade, but make sure you leave that bit white. Makes it stand out more. Shade in those four scales there, but just see I'm just shading in the middle, I'm leaving bits of white around the edge. Make a line. A bit of shade come down here. So although it looks like I'm making a shade, I'm actually trying to keep a white line through there. Now I'll just do this a little bit to all these scales here. So you just leave the edge of them white. I can't bother too much. I'm not going to do those ones there. That can be white. I like shining on it. But hey, what a beautiful snake, eh? And that's how you draw a dugite. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Join me next time when I'm going to draw something else. Fascinating, interesting, and something to do with natural history. Bye.